This video explains the details behind the long range four port expansion board item number 951-62. Now this particular unit um, is already mounted in our 936 pre-assembled enclosure. Now we have other units and of course power supplies, how many power supplies and all this, but this is to focus just on this board. So let's go through some of the features on this board. First is we have pluggable connections. So you can see that we can plug and unplug these connections. Now they do have four wires, but that does not indicate that these are four wire pixels. This is only for three wire pixels, such as 2811s. All right, now the output types are marked on the bottom of the board. You can see a plus, a ground, and a data connection to show you where it is. Now also on the board, not lit up, <coughs> and actually um, if we have these configured in the controller, there's a green light that will light up down here at the bottom, and that'll indicate that you have programmed this particular output. In other words, this receiver should be outputting data according to your configuration at the controller level. And now a few other lights that we have. We also have four lights right next to the left of each of the fuses. Those indicate if the fuse is blown. If the light's out, the fuse is blown. You can easily get to these fuses because there's lots of space between them. We also have four lights over here, three of which are shown lit up. And these four lights here show us the status of the data lines. So we have data coming in, and I'll explain that in a moment. And the data comes in across four pairs of wires, and these will tweak as you're using and receiving data. They simply just tell you, yes, you're getting data. So if you didn't see those lights coming on, that would probably indicate that you have something wrong with your Cat5 cable. <clears throat> Now, we also have a switch here. This switch allows us to set the, the type of unit. So there can be up to 16 total units. So we set the dip switches. Now the dip switches, <coughs> the settings, can be seen here. If it's a little hard to see, it doesn't matter. In the controller, it will actually tell you which switch goes up and which switch goes down. So on is up and down is to the bottom or off. Now, uh, we also have a blue light here that's not lit up, that's test mode. We also have another blue light over here which indicates power. Uh, while we're here at power, you'll see that we have a nice, good, sturdy uh, clamping system on our uh, power inputs. That allows you to clamp down lots of wires. You can also double up wires, so if you need to come in and then go out again, uh, you can do that. Um, and they're fully isolated here with uh, barriers. All right, now, these also have four millimeter mounting holes, uh, and in some of our newer mountings, you can simply just pop these right onto standoff studs uh, for easy installation and quick without having to use screws, which are shown here. Now, let's show you some of the test uh, features in this. So I'm gonna press and hold the test button. So I've got some pixels here hooked up on this controller, I mean this receiver. I'm just gonna press and hold this. And you see the blue light go on, that means we're in test mode. And I'm just gonna press it again, red, green, blue, white, off. Now why would you need that? You, you can use that to test your pixels. Now you'll notice that I have no data going into this receiver. Um, and it is still fully operational. And that is so you can test your pixels. Maybe you just wanna pull out a string of pixels and see if there's uh, no problems with them. So great, you pull them all out and you can test them and see if they're working. Um, now, it also has a feature. If we press and hold the test button down for 10 seconds or more, what will happen is the controller can go into a um, version identification mode. Now there is firmware on this controller. It's a fairly complex device. Um, and its firmware can be changed over the wire. In other words, when this firmware is old, new firmware will be uploaded into the long range uh, receiver and replace it. Now our competitors' products have no way to update your firmware. Uh, it is set and you're done. So if there's any bugs or improvements they wanna make, they have to purchase an entire new unit. With this, new firmware can be updated fairly easily. Now, it's going to flash First, it's gonna show white with one flash, that's version one, point, and then the next number is two, flashes of red. They'll be see a green, that means we're at the end of the version number, and then we start over again. So if you have one flash here for white, white indicates the major revision number, one, and then the revision, secondary revision is two flashes. So there's our version number. Now, let's talk a little bit about the actual way we get data in here. Uh, the day we, way we get data in here is CAT5. Now, the, the length of uh, cable between this and where you're receiving your data 
is up to around 500 feet. Now the amount varies. Uh, we have generally tested around 300 feet uh, and no problems at all. Uh, but you may get further longer runs depending upon the quality of your cable and other possible interference from outside of that cable. All right. So, uh, where does it get its data from? Now, please note that this cannot just be plugged into your LiDARama controller, cannot be plugged into your Ethernet. It is not E131. What it is is a long-range signal, and that long-range signal must originate from a long-range expansion board. So you must have a controller that has a long-range expansion board. So, that data comes from the long-range expansion board, into this unit. Now that long range expansion board has four Cat5 cables. So everything I'm going to talk about is times four. Now what's feeding that long range expansion board is a Hinx Pix Pro CPU. You must use a Hinx Pix Pro CPU. If you're using the Alpha Pix uh, Evolution, you can use the downgrade version of this, which is called a regular receiver, which does not have the ability to daisy chain these. All right. Now, uh, we're coming in with our Cat5 cable. We're landing here. Now we can distribute our pixels out any way we want. How many pixels? 680 pixels times three. I'm um, four, four. 680 times four. So for each pair of wires, again, there are four pairs of wires. We can then drive 680 across each of those pairs of wires. Now, once we come in, we can split off our pixels. You could say uh, 50 pixels here, 50 pixels here, 50 pixels here, 50 pixels here, and then you could go off and go to another long range receiver, either another four, 16, uh, AC controller, uh, whatever you'd like, right? Uh, you just indicate the receiver number by using these dip switches and you just change the number from 0 through 15. Each one has its own unique identifier and then it'll operate. Now what's interesting here is compared to competitor products is we don't have one single wire you can run 300 feet or so. We have 300 times up to 15 because we regenerate the signal. So when the signal comes in and then it goes out, we are regenerating the signal. So when it's split off and goes out, you have a whole nother 300 feet and then another 300 feet, and then another 300, or maybe longer. So this has full repeating capabilities. So you could be thousands of feet away from your receiver with one unit, one Cat5 cable. All right, so that covers our overview of the long range smart receiver for outputs. Now some of this information may apply to our 16 also. Uh, check our videos for more information.